So, you want to start a blog, but you don't know where to begin. The first thing you should ask yourself is, what will I blog about? And I know it might be tempting to say, I'll just figure it out as I go, but my advice is to have a clear idea of what you will blog about before you even begin. So finding a niche is a great place to start. So why is finding your niche beneficial? Well, the content you blog about, your niche, will help you determine a clear focus for your content, your brand, and your potential success. While it is possible to go too broad or too narrow for a niche to be beneficial, finding the sweet spot can make you an authority in your field, a bigger fish in a smaller pond, and provide structure for your content. And because the content tends to be a little more specific, audiences of niche blogs tend to be highly engaged, intentional, and loyal, which is highly valuable. Everyone is going to have their own definition as to what qualifies as niche. And for me, I like to think of it in terms of three different levels, macro niche, niche, and micro niche. And we'll talk about each starting with macro. So macro niche is the general category or umbrella. So think wellness, beauty, style, travel, business, food, parenting, any grouping that has defining borders without being too specific. And the benefit of this is that it leaves you tons of wiggle room. You can have pretty much any content that falls within that very broad border. But the not so good thing is that it opens you up to so much competition if you don't have a particular area of focus and you can get lost in a sea of blogs. So you might wanna consider niche. If macro niche is the general category, then niche is the subsection of that category that narrows it down just a bit more. So instead of just a beauty blogger, maybe you're a beauty blogger who focuses on darker skin tones Maybe you're not just a travel blogger, you're a budget travel blogger. Instead of a style blogger, you could be a petite style blogger or a plus size style blogger or a vintage style blogger. So I think this is the Goldilocks sweet spot because it's not too broad and it's not too narrow and it gives you a chance to focus on something that you're really knowledgeable or passionate about and you can be an expert in your field. You can really become a bigger fish in a smaller pond and with a well-targeted audience. And all the while, you're not limiting yourself too much in terms of content. So what is micro niche? That's right, it gets even more specific and sometimes super specific, which you could call nano niche, but for the sake of keeping this a little bit more simple, let's just say that there are multiple levels to micro niche. Now here's the tricky part. You don't want to paint yourself into a corner. So while niching down can narrow down your competition and give you a little bit more focus, which is great, it also has the potential of narrowing down your audience and the longevity of your content if you go a little too specific or fad driven. So maybe put your Bridgerton blog idea on the back burner for now, unless it's just for fun. Or you can open it up to other period pieces so that you have a little more room for content. Now the big question is, how do I find out what my niche is? Well, make some lists. A great place to start when determining your niche is to ask yourself two questions. One, what am I interested in? And two, what am I most knowledgeable about? Make a list of both, and if there's overlap, even better. So say you're a vegan, you're an excellent cook, and you love photography, and you also love comfort food. Boom, vegan comfort food blogger. Or maybe you're a parent, three children, you love to travel, you've become a little bit of an expert. That leaves room for you to start a family-friendly blog with travel tips and experiences. Once you have that list, make another list with at least 10 possible article ideas per category. And if the ideas are flowing freely, you're on the right track because the idea is that you'll likely be blogging about this for years to come. So you wanna make sure you can flesh out as many posts as possible. This is why it's also important to make sure you're super passionate and knowledgeable about the topic and why it's especially important to ask yourself, will this be relevant in the next five to 10 years? Finally, figure out if there's an audience for this. 
researcher competition or future collaborators and see what's working and what is not. Because if there's a potential for a sizable audience, that means there's also potential for monetization, whether it's through ads, affiliate revenue, brand collabs, or all of the above. As I stated before, finding your niche is a valuable tool for giving your content structure, making you an authority of your topic, and helping you stand out amongst the crowd. And it's up to you how broad or narrow you want your niche to be, but make sure you do not paint yourself into a corner or you'll run out of things to talk about or the interest to continue. So here is what I want you to do next. Make those lists that I talked about and then make some loose plans for future posts. And above all, have fun with it because the best blogs out there have creators behind it who are truly passionate about their topic. For more creator tips and insights, don't forget to watch my past episodes, and also don't forget to subscribe for future episodes. Bye.